Director of ICT. Um, Faculty of Medicine and Health Science and Institute of Social Informatics and Technological Innovations proudly and with great honor welcome you to the first University Public Lecture of the Year. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, before we start, I'd like to explain a bit the format for today's lecture. The, the, the two presenters today, I will introduce you in turn and uh, they will present uninterrupted. Q&A session will follow when both of them presented, I have finished presentations. And the last bit of the today's agenda will be a presentation ceremony, so please don't leave until that, that is uh, concluded. Now the first lecture is entitled Diet and Colon Cancer. May I introduce you to the speaker? Professor Go Hak Su is no stranger to us. I believe he was born and bred in a town called Muka. Mm -hmm. You know where Muka is? And um, we worked together for a bit, for, for a while, for a brief period in 1980 in, in a hospital in what was that called? Sarawak General Hospital. He was fresh without FRCS of UK. And being a young surgeon, he was very full of enthusiasm. I was then a young medical officer, still with full of hairs on my head. <laughs> and uh, Sarawak lost a very talented surgeon when he left us. And of course, I was sad to see him leave. And our loss was definitely and is definitely a game for Singapore. You know, you have read the city. He has achieved so many firsts in Singapore. He is someone who is well known in the field of chronic surgery. You Google his name, his name will be known with thousands of hits. Okay, he's, he's, for that, I suppose, no, I suppose, for that, I am, and I hope all of you as a Sarawakian are proud of the fact that. We have one renowned, famous, yeah. outstanding yeah. surgeon yeah. in Singapore. <laughs> and I will not bother too much to spend so much of my time describing his achievement. We're going to hear a lecture today that is relevant and important to all of us. I'm sure some of you must know or related to someone with colon, colon cancer. Personally, I lost a brother from colon cancer. So this topic today is of major interest to all of us. And may I present to you Professor Go Haksu. so many of you coming here to listen to us. I hope it's worth your while. <clears throat> I'm going to talk to you about diet and colorectal cancer. I, I was told that there are some who are not in the medical field, so I'll start from the beginning. This is the colon. This part is the rectum. Rectum comes from the Latin word of being straight. The, the straight part of our large bowel is the rectum. That's why we always refer to colorectal, which includes the anus. So there are three parts to the large bowel. You have the colon, and that starts from the uh, appendix side all the way around and this is the rectum, and here's the anus. What, what are the functions? Why do we have large bowel or colorectum? First and foremost, it is for storage. If we don't have a colon, we will all be wearing pampers. <laughs> so it's very important that uh, it stores waste product. 
like, uh, I don't know, it's a PWD work, is it? Here yeah, that deals with uh, storage of waste material. It's also an important organ for absorbing water. When our intestine, the small intestine, the content of the small intestine enters the large intestine, which is the colon, it's a large volume of water. I don't know whether you know, it is 11 liters of water that comes in to the large bowel. And that water is absorbed by the, uh, by the large bowel. And when we pass it out, it's, uh, the water content is only about 130 to uh, 300 ml. So from 11 liters to 150 ml is quite uh, uh, something. And that is a major function of the colon. <coughs> it is also a very important uh, storage uh, space for bacteria. It is now known as microbiota. Last night we were just talking about whether we should be taking probiotic or whether we, we should eat uh, yogurt. I don't know if you know how much bacteria we have in our, in our, in our colon. One cc, just one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter centimeter. That's a cube. One piece of our fecal material contains 10 to the 12 bacteria. That is a thousand billion bacteria. And each one of us probably have two kilograms of fecal material in our, in our colon. So we are talking a large, large amount of bacteria which is an important balance for us to have good health. So it's a very important part, which we are now beginning to realize and understand how, to, uh, how the bacteria uh, is important to, to our health. So, so when you take, <coughs> say, yogurt, or I don't know whether you have yakult here, which is very popular in Singapore, a can of yakult, or they say there's a lot of bacteria in it, something like 300,000 but it is like a drop in the ocean when it goes down to the colon so whether you take yakult or yogurt every day it's not going to make any difference to our health because we have so many of the bacteria in it it's very important to realize that. and the third thing and the fourth thing is that it helps us to digest fiber we are not rabbits you know we are not cows and horses we cannot digest fiber. Human beings just cannot. Uh, but we do have break down some of the fibers because the bacteria in our colon helps to break down some of the fibers. And it is important. Uh, uh, that, that is important function. So this is briefly the function of the colon. Now what is cancer? This is a normal colon. Can I point this? Can I use this to point? Which is that? This one? This is the one? Ah, yeah. Now this is a colonoscopy. We are looking inside the colon with a scope. This is normal. That's what the normal looks like. This is what a cancer looks like. It has a growth inside. It grows from inside the colon. And the cancer will kill somebody if you don't treat by two mechanisms. One is that uh, this thing can get completely blocked up. Then you are blocked. Your system is blocked. Then you have pain, you are vomiting. And if the colon bursts, then you die. The other way, which is more common, is that it spreads to other parts of the body. To the liver, to the lung, and it kills you. So that's how cancer kills us. And that's where the cancer comes from. So that is to say it the background. Now, 50 years ago, colorectal cancer is very, was very uncommon in Asia or Africa. It was mainly a European uh, <coughs> disease. So America, Australia, New Zealand, and Europe. But in Asia in those days, 50 years ago in Sarawak, Singapore, we don't hear. We have other problems. 
But today, 